Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading of Storyteller's Tale by Amanda Mellett, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Prologue. Hey, prospect, Rat roars out and beckons me over. You tell it, he instructs. He gives Beard such a nudge, it almost pushes him off the couch while simultaneously saying, you'd fuck it up, brother. Unconcerned, Beard shrugs, repositions himself, then leans back and raises his beer bottle as a signal for me to go ahead. Trying to suppress my grin and keep my expression serious, I widen my stance, clasp my hands behind my back, and begin. It was a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky, sun glinting off the chrome of our Harleys. The air was tinged by the scent of a wildfire. In the distance, a plume of smoke could be seen, but the news was that it was under containment. Rat interrupts. Beard wanted some new aftersave, aftershave or such shit. I wait for the roar of laughter to fade as the man, and for the man with the waist-length beard to survive another of Rat's violent nudges. Then, allowing my lips only the faintest twitch, get back to my retelling. We parked the but we parked up the bikes. Me, obviously, being told to stand guard while Beard went inside and restocked with extra small condoms. Thought Rat said it was aftershave. Pothead pulls up a chair and plants his ass. Glancing around, I see he's not the only one who's drawn closer. Poetic license, I wink. Anyway, so what was it? Bull approaches. Condoms or... Beard sits up straight. Does it fucking matter? What happened was... Nah, let him tell it. Prez approaches, straws, and sits on the arm of the couch. Carry on, prospect. I suppress another twitch of my lips. As I said... The sun was beating down, warming the day, and presumably heating some tempers. As I stood with one eye on our bikes, I watched Beard exit the store with a package, and he was followed by two elderly men. Beard snorts and shakes his head as he remembers. They were cursing up a storm. Shush! He's admonished from all sides, glared at, and then the attention returns to me. Schooling my features, I recommence. One man was leaning on a Zimmer frame. One was, using a, one was using a walking stick. As they walked out, their words carried clearly. Clearly. Motherfucker, one shouted. You goddamn son of a goat, yelled the other. They were quite inventive, Beard interrupts again. I nodded. Yeah, I was particularly impressed by your mother sucked donkey balls and it took it up the ass. Chuckles of laughter came from my audience, which again seemed to have expanded. It went from vertical, verbal, excuse me. It went from verbal to physical in the blink of an eye. The dude with the stick brandished it like a sword. He was blocked by the frame being used as a shield. The moves started to get quite impressive as though they were 90 year old ninjas, both trying to get hits in and both staggering from the effort. It wasn't clear which one of them was winning when this old broad comes tearing out of the store and starts beating both men with her purse. I use a falsetto. You worthless motherfuckers, you ain't even got dicks long enough to get fucking met to fucking measure anymore. Guffaw sound as I return to my normal voice. Mothers covered their kids' ears, but no one intervened to separate them. We were all watching the free entertainment. I grinned, thinking back, seeing the fighting trio in my mind. Employees came out of the store and tried to separate them, but punches, sticks, and purses were flying. A man in a suit got caught in the nose or something and blood was flowing. He tried to restrain that old bitch, but that got the men joining sides and both started attacking him. I paused, seeing my audience is wrapped. It was a beautiful day, I repeat, sun blazing down, peace interrupted by the sound of sirens. They got arrested, Rat asks. Wait for the punchline, Beard warns him. Chuckling, I shake my head. Nah, the store manager, the guy in the suit, decided not to press charges. It turns out the elderly trio were a menage a trois, and the fucker with the Zimmer frame had been arguing it was his turn tonight. There were snorts all around, then Prez points his finger at me. You're making that bit up. Makes for a better story, I respond, unrepentant. Beard sighs and rolls his eyes. Should have listened to me. All I would have said was, we were late as there. All I said, all I would have said was, we were late as there were these three old fuckers fighting outside the store. Rat punches his arm. Yeah, but we like how we like how he tells them. 
Prez stands, grimaces as though he's wasted moments of his valuable time, then tilts his head as he looks at me. You ever get patched in, Prospect? Your handle's going to be Storyteller. If I ever get patched in. I acknowledge his comment with a raise of my chin. I have no problem with that handle. I just want to prove my worth and earn it. I've been prospecting for 11 months, and as each day passes, I get the jitters that, however hard I try, I might not make the grade. If I don't, I have no idea what my life will look like. Since starting life as a veteran, I've become completely invested in joining one of the biggest one percenter MCs in the country, with chapters all over the world. Drawn by the lifestyle, the camaraderie, and the way they hold their middle finger up at authority, I can't think of I can't think of anywhere else where I'd fit in so well. But they've got to want me. So I do everything asked with a smile on my face. However, disgusting or grim the task may be, giving no one the opportunity to criticize or question my loyalty. Sometimes, like today, I'm rewarded. I've worked my ass off and finished everything early. When Bull, my sponsor, tells me to get my ass home sensibly, I don't argue. I'm in a luckier position than most prospects who aren't always allowed to go to the club whores during the prospect prospecting period, as I have a girlfriend who's been with me prior to coming on board. At least I don't have to suffer from blue balls, and I have a few ideas on how to use the additional free time that's been offered. As well as his permission to leave, Bull had also issued admonishments to get my ass back here early in the morning to compensate, but that's fine. Eagerly, I head for my bike and point it in the direction of my small one-room apartment that I share with the love of my life, who I'd met shortly after I'd finished my final tour. Not a day goes by when I don't think fuck I was in the right place at the right time to find her. She's pretty, petite, intelligent, and witty, and I hadn't wasted time locking her down. We clicked immediately, hooked up, and have been together since. She's got my ring on her finger, and if I get my patch, I'll do it properly and claim her as my old lady. Yeah, I'm pussy whipped. I'll admit it. I'll admit to it and take all the flack that my hopefully soon-to-be brothers throw at me. She's the one good fucking thing that's happened to me in my life. She makes me want to be a better man, and I'm never going to let her down. As I pull into the parking lot, knowing she won't be expecting me this early, my lips curve at the thought of how pleased she'll be. She often complains that she doesn't get to see me. More times than I can count, I don't stagger in until the early hours, the need to be back at the crack of dawn. But, good-naturedly, she puts up with me putting in the long hours, as she knows how impor important joining the wretched souls is to me. I park my bike, then remember the florist just up the street. Fee deserves recognition for how much support she gives, so I detour, pick up a bouquet of her favorite blooms, approaching the apartment on foot, carrying a bunch of the aromatic flowers. I use my key, the initial words of my greeting coming out, honey, I'm, but then the words stop. It's only a one room apartment, bedroom, living space, and kitchen combined. So there's nothing to hide the side of my loving fiance getting railed on the bed directly in my line of sight. She's clearly very much a willing participant as witnessed by their loud grunts and groans and frenzied athletic movements, which had... Had it been another couple, might have been might have impressed me. So intent on themselves, they've not noticed my voice or my entry. With a, with a roar, I throw the flowers down to the ground and launch forward, grabbing the naked man by his shoulder and pulling him off her. With an equally loud shout, he spins and faces me, his erect and wet dick swinging in the breeze. Stand the fuck down, prospect, he thunders, and when I make another move toward him, he holds his hand up and repeats, stand the fuck down. Blinded with by rage, I don't listen. My fist rise and I hit him straight in the jaw, making him lurch backward. The fucker shakes his head and grins, holding up his hands defensively. I'll give you that one, but not one more. You want that patch, don't you? I want my patch. Jake thought fee wails i didn't i couldn't she swallows rapidly as though trying to gain some gain some time but whatever fucking excuse she's trying to come up with won't settle me i could see she's been into it as much as him she tries though i thought i was helping you get your patch like fuck she did my brain works a million miles a minute i'm a prospect if i want my patch i can't hit a fucking member or not again seeing as how he seems to have allowed that one shot to pass 
Custer has had his patch for years and is now standing gloating in front of me. Just making sure you can share, Prospect. Look at it as part of your initiation. Then he fucking laughs. Indecision sweeps through me. I've chased that patch for 11 months, but now I'm not sure I want to join the club anymore. The man inside wants a slice of revenge and wants to slap cut or smirk off of his face. But I've worked so hard. And I'm a, and I'm a man who thrives on self-control. Get the fuck out of my apartment, I roar. I may be able to buy myself time, but I won't be able to hold back unless he gets out of my face. He holds up his hands. I'm going, I'm going. He's still laughing as he yanks on his jeans, steps into his boots, picks up a shirt and cut, and walks out of the door. While I may be experiencing second thoughts about wanting to join the club, I have no doubts about the woman at the heart of this. Even naked, she's trying to persuade me that I've been mistaken in what I thought I saw, but I know my fucking eyes didn't lie. I ignore her protest. I go to the closet and start pulling out her clothes. Pack your shit. Jake, I said, pack your fucking shit, I growl, or I'll just throw it out. Fee's weeping, begging, telling me it's all a mistake, but I know it isn't. When I ask how long she's been fucking him behind my back, she can't lie for shit. Oh, she tries, but I can see straight through her. I just about hold it together until she finally leaves, tears streaking her face, but leaving me cold. Then, when the door closes behind her, I wait only for the sound of her car engine to start before I fall to my knees, my hands clasping my head as I lose my battle to hold everything together. I thought she was it for me, my ride or die. I was wrong. How can I go back to the fucking club? Do I want to be patched in? Have to sit around the table with Custer, treating him like my fucking brother? Rocking on my haunches, I stay on the ground. Time passes and my distress keeps me down. I've lost the woman I thought I'd be with for life. We've been planning our marriage for fuck's sake. And without my club, what the hell would I do? Since leaving the Navy, I never considered anything else. The sun drops behind the horizon. Darkness descends on the room. But still, I don't move, frozen to the spot. Thoughts assailing my mind, coming so fast, one after the other, but pre presenting no solutions on how I move forward from here. Fuck knows how long it's been going on before my door bursts open. The shock does nothing more than make me lift my face. If death's coming for me, I'd be pleased if he'd take me now. But it's not a man dressed in black carrying a Sith. It's the Prez, Chaz, along with his VP, Dane, and there's Bull, my sponsor, alongside them. After the glance of recognition, I stare down at the floor once more, just wanting to be left alone. Chaz doesn't give me that choice. On your fucking feet, prospect. <clears throat> a growl enters my throat. I don't answer to you anymore. I quit. The fuck you say? Bull takes action, his meaty arms grabbing mine and pulling me up. Shrugging him off, I shake myself and stand my ground. Kick me out or leave me, but I don't want to be part of the wretched souls. Them coming here, busting in, probably to give me shit about hitting one of their precious patched members has ensured that. Prez looks around, his face tightened slightly as they fall on the unmade bed, the site of the crime. His eyes meet mine. Don't give a damn what happens in other chapters, but in mine, old ladies are off limits. Custer was out of fucking line. Huffing, I remind him, she's not an old lady. I wasn't patched, so I never claimed her. He waves his hand. Fucking semantics. As for your patch, we've already taken a vote on that. Only the formalities are left, and circumstances has, have expedited those. He holds his hand out behind him, and as if by some prior agreement, Bull puts something in it. When Prez again brings it around to the front, patches are resting on his palm, the full three-patch insignias of the wretched souls. There's also a name patch bearing the word storyteller. I reach automatically to take them, then pull my hand back. Straightening my spine, I tell them honestly, I can't sit around the table with Custer. Bull grimaces, Dane shakes his head, but Chad still regards me firmly. Guess that. He sweeps his hair back over his shoulder. You've been wronged, brother. The slight hesitation suggests he's trying the new mode of address on Precise. Can understand how you're feeling. Betrayal ain't going to be a good start. He raises his foot, places it on the coffee table, and leans forward over his knee. Here's the deal. You sew those patches on, come to the club, and I'll give you the chance to take your pound of flesh. But in the fucking ring. You hear me? I raise my chin, but I still don't see how letting Custer off with the beating, even if I'm the one to deliver it, 
will assay, assuage the, my hurt. I fucking loved Fee. I trusted her. Chaz, I, Chaz's eyes draw me in. Just so there's no misunderstanding. There will only be one man walking away from said fight. You got me? You win. You keep your patch, brother. And won't need to see Custer's face around the table. You lose. You won't need to worry about anything anymore as you won't be breathing. Or you suck it up, shake hands, and forget it. He pauses. Final option. You take a beat down and leave the club. He places his foot back on the floor. We'll leave you to consider. See you at the club in an hour with your decision. Having delivered that bombshell, he swings on his heels and beckons Bull and Dane to follow him. The trio walk out of the door, leaving me with my mouth open. A fight to the death? Shake hands with Custer? Or take a beating and leave the club? Those appear to be my only options, and to my mind, there's no fucking choice. I won't be sent away with my tail between my legs as if, some, as if it's something I've done wrong. <coughs> nor will I ever be able to call Custer brother. It wouldn't have been the first time I've killed a man with my bare hands, but before it had been for my country. And then I'd been driven by nothing more than personal desire to survive.